Spinal stenosis is a condition in which the spinal canal narrows and compresses the spinal cord and nerves. We spoke with Dr. Dean Lin of Lee Memorial Health System to learn the symptoms and the treatments for this condition. Spinal stenosis is a very common condition as we become older, uh, or around here I like to say more mature in life, some of the nerves as they travel down through our spines can become pinched and frequently this causes various symptoms, predominantly things like back pain and lower extremity pain. When it happens in the neck, it also can also cause neck pain as well as pain in the arms as well. And um, typically this is, you know, people have heard the term sciatica. This is a result of stenosis and basically all it means is the nerves are being pinched in your spine somewhere. Uh, basically this happens as a result of long-standing arthritic changes for the most part um, and you know the long-term effects of gravity and arthritis on a, on a patient's body and the patient's spine. As the bone spurs build up in the back and they start pinching nerves, that's when patients start developing symptoms. Dr. Lin tells us about the common symptoms. Very commonly they'll say that they're very comfortable when they're just sitting down, but as soon as they stand up and start walking around, they develop shooting pain that goes all the way down their legs. Um, if it happens in their neck, you know, very commonly they'll say they have severe pain in their arms. Those are probably the most common presentations. Typically, it lasts for at least several weeks and sometimes can become permanent. Uh, now, most of the time when patients have back pain or neck pain, that's a very temporary condition that goes away within six to eight weeks. If it goes on for longer than that, then that's when we start ordering tests like MRIs and other studies to prove that they have spinal stenosis, what we already suspect. Um, as far as how long the condition lasts, Typically, unless you do something about it, you know, have surgery or whatever, or, or you know, uh, have some epidural injections or physical therapy, the, con the condition can be permanent. How is spinal stenosis diagnosed? Frequently, the very, the very first thing we do, obviously, is we sit down and we talk to the patient, and just from their history and their description of their symptoms, most of the time I can tell already that, you know, look, I know you've got spinal stenosis. And then we look at the MRI, and that just confirms our suspicions. Treatment of this condition starts with conservative approaches. The very first ways we treat any sort of these kind of spinal problems, unless there is a specific neurologic deficit, such as a weakness or a numbness, is we try some non-surgical things first, uh, whether that be some pain medications or anti-inflammatories and muscle relaxants for a few weeks. And then if that doesn't work, then we can move on to things like physical therapy and send, uh, being referred to an interventional pain specialist where they can do cortisone injections and epidurals in the back. Um, if all else fails, surgery is kind of a last resort. What I normally tell patients is that our nerves run down through our spine in basically a, 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 a bony cave, okay? Um, the problem is the cave doesn't give, it's very rigid, and as the cave gets more narrow, as a result of arthritis and disc bulges and you know, other degenerative changes, then those nerves get pinched more and more. And the only way to get the pressure off the nerves is essentially to unroof the cave. So what we would do is we remove some bone spurs and some bones there that are pinching the nerves and take the pressure off all the nerves. That generally makes patients feel dramatically better. In general, the success rates are very high. I'd say over 90%. And you know, the decompression in the right population and the right kind of decompression can be very successful in basically giving someone their life back. For more information about Dr. Lin or the Lee Memorial Health System's neurological services, call 239-454-8725 or visit leememorial.org.